On June 3rd, 2021, the Hudson's Bay Company closed its downtown Edmonton store location, effectively marking the end of an era. In one way or another, the Hudson's Bay Company has had an established presence in the Edmonton area for longer than Edmonton has even existed as a city. Long before the township of Edmonton was established, the Hudson's Bay Company was already operating in the fur trade. In fact, there is no incorporated company in all of North America as old as HBC, and its history is one which is closely tied to, and in fact is an integral part of the colonization of North America by the British and French. By the 17th century, the fur trade had become a prominent economic endeavor in the lands which would eventually become incorporated into the country of Canada. Yet. Nearly 200 years before the Canadian Confederation in 1867, the Hudson's Bay Company was founded, way back on May 2nd, 1670. So knowing this, it shouldn't come as a surprise that many of the municipalities and cities which exist in Canada today came into existence, at least in part, because of the Hudson's Bay Company. But. Before Fort Edmonton was founded as an HBC trading post in 1795, even before the arrival of HBC and the Europeans on the continent, this area was a traditional gathering place, a traveling route, and, well, home to the indigenous peoples of the land. Today, Edmonton resides in the Treaty 6 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Cree, Diné, Blackfoot, Salto, Nakota Sioux, and Métis people. And when we speak about Edmonton's history, it's important to acknowledge how the many footsteps of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people have marked these lands for generations, well before the concept of Edmonton as a city was ever conceived. So as we explore a more recent history of Edmonton and its ties to the Hudson's Bay Company, we recognize the land and the traditional knowledge keepers and elders, both those who are with us today and those who have gone before, and we do this as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory on which Edmonton exists today. Though, where Edmonton was built was not actually where the 1795 fort was located. The original Fort Edmonton was in fact a lot closer to what we know today as Fort Saskatchewan. It was in 1802 when Fort Edmonton moved to the area we know today as the Rossdale community. It sat there for nearly 30 years, before relocating once again. This time, the trading post moved further up the hill to where the legislature building is today. This was the last place it would exist before Edmonton was officially incorporated into a township in 1892. And it was in the surrounding years, when the town had a population of roughly 400 people, that Hudson's Bay opened its first standalone store in Edmonton. Craig Patterson, Retail Insider. Over time, the downtown Edmonton Jasper Avenue Hudson's Bay store expanded, first to three levels, culminating eventually in a massive 470,000 square foot department store. While the shoppers, salespeople and cash registers which rang in the massive retail center are now long gone, the building itself stands in the city's core, having been declared a municipal historic resource by the Edmonton Historical Board in 2006. Commuters and passers-by may notice the historical artwork, etchings, emblems and stories which still adorn the site today, even if the once retail powerhouse has moved from the site as it did in the 1990s. Though by the time the Woodward's chain had already gone bankrupt and the Bay had taken over the 400,000 square foot retail location formerly occupied by Woodward's, directly across from Winston Churchill Square, just like West Edmonton Mall, Edmonton's downtown core was now home to two Bay stores. That's over a million square feet of pinstripes, purses, and perfumes. Hi, Bob. Hi, Cher. Great names at the Bay. And by this time, the Jasper Avenue store was reeling from an unsuccessful transformation into what they were calling the Hudson's Bay Centre, a failed attempt at creating a mix of retail, dining, and smaller Hudson's Bay Centre department store. In 1995, the Bay exited the project and amalgamated into the former Woodward store at Edmonton Centre. Over the next seven years, two of the cores went separate shopping centres, including the Eaton Centre and Edmonton Centre, combined to create what exists today as Edmonton City Centre. And at the far west end, with a mall entrance living underneath a beautiful atrium and skylight, you'll find the retail center's major anchor location, Hudson's Bay. Or you would have. 
Earlier this year, the struggling department store chain shuttered its Edmonton City Center location. Although four other Hudson's Bay locations exist throughout Edmonton, at least for now, but hopefully for a long time to come, the closure of Edmonton's central location marks the end of an over 200-year streak where HBC has existed at the center of Edmonton. Those who know me know that I have a soft spot in my heart for the Bay. But not just the Bay, all department stores. I loved Zellers and Sears, Woodward's and Eaton's, even if my memories of those last two are a little more foggy. They remind me of being a kid, going on outings with my mom and my grandmother. So I just had to visit that Bay location one last time before it closed. And if you're going to visit downtown Edmonton's HBC location, there's one place you have to park. In the department store's dedicated, heated, underground parking garage. Though it looks like there's no physical parking ticket to pick up these days. You know, there's something I really love about walking around an empty, quiet parking garage. I like to imagine I'm the last man on earth walking around in a post-apocalyptic world. Unfortunately though, I discovered that the garage entrance to the bay was shut completely. So I had to venture back up to the street level entrance, of which they only had one open. Upon entering the store, I found that there were more shoppers browsing what was left of the clearance items than what might normally be found on a typical shopping day at that location. Though by this stage in the game, mere days before it closed, the items available for selection were severely limited. This store closure is different from others, as the chain itself remains operating elsewhere. Much of the highly sought after items, like my beloved HBC Stripe merchandise, would have been moved to other Hudson's Bay locations to be sold at regular retail prices. The lower retail floor, which had been dedicated largely to furniture, appliances, kitchen, bath, and homeware, was largely empty. Most of the space was now dedicated to selling the fixtures, or storing those which were already sold. The rest of the floor was still occupied by some furniture, and if it was more nicely staged, and with the right tunnel vision, you might actually think you're looking at a fully stocked store. But though it might look like there's lots here, many of the items were marked as sold pending pickup. There wasn't a whole ton left unclaimed. Venturing from the main floor to the upper floor, it was more of the same. In some places, like children's wear, there was still lots to choose from. But all you needed to do was venture across the aisle to roughly 80% of the rest of the retail space to see the real picture. Can't really describe the feeling I get when I'm shooting footage of a retail space closing. It's an odd mix of nostalgia, disappointment, curiosity, and disbelief. I've already mentioned that department stores strike a nerve with me, reminding me of growing up in, at least as seen from the eyes of a child, simpler times. And even though I honestly didn't frequent this location all that much, the mall entrance has been one of the most attractively laid out that I've ever seen, with the store itself wrapping around the mall concourse. Of course, that's all blocked off now. The suburbanization of retail has hit downtown cores and cities across North America hard. The rise of automobiles in the suburban shopping center saw consumers gravitate away from downtowns, creating competition and reduced foot traffic which proved insurmountable for many downtown businesses. In Edmonton, Kingsway Mall is proximate to downtown Edmonton and offers free parking and a range of stores not found in the downtown core. The Southgate Centre is another draw and is on a transit line while also offering free parking and an expanded assortment of brands which again are not found downtown. West Edmonton Mall, in all of its glory, saw more than 30 million visitors prior to the pandemic and has created a compelling clustering of retail, food and beverage, and entertainment as well, of course, which again is pulling consumers from downtown Edmonton. Department stores themselves have become irrelevant over the years in North America for the most part. The rise of brands themselves, along with retail category killers, discounters and online shopping have all played a role in the demise of the department store in North America for the most part. If you want an amazing department store experience, you may want to look to places in Europe and Asia. We've seen a lot of retail and restaurant locations suffer during the pandemic, and downtown locations are feeling the full brunt of the stay-at-home measures and restrictions. The foot traffic which comes with bustling offices and active businesses has all but disappeared, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. 
Hopefully, as we come to the other side of this, things will return to normal and the gears will start turning yet again. And when we do, why not take a trip downtown? Stop and look at the building, which might not house the iconic retail today, but still bears the marks of our city's history. Perhaps travel to the city center to support some local businesses and to admire an attractive atrium and skylight in our city's core. And when you do, remember how the city we live in can be traced back to forts and trading posts, and how, albeit in many different locations, for over 200 years, one store was in the middle of it all. Remember North America's oldest and Edmonton's first icon of retail trade. Remember Hudson's Bay. Pandemic aside, did you often shop downtown? Why or why not? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Give us a like and a share. And maybe even visit our Patreon page. And why not check out one of our other videos? All about the greatest indoor show on earth. West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching. <laughs>